Hello and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play World Tanks and as you can see here I am in the KV-5 a great great person by the name of uh, Sapphire Fox gave me this KV-5 as a little thank you gift and I definitely have to express my gratitude to him it certainly is a really awesome tank especially in the fact that it is actually getting removed really soon from uh, the store just like the Type 59 was but there's a rumor that that's actually coming back so, uh, I decided I'm going to give this little thing a shot. It's, uh, I've been playing around with it to try and get the feel of it. And it is very, um, how should I word this? It cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe against larger targets at all. It is meant to simply bully around the little guy. And I have no problem with that, because the little guy is soft, and this gun goes through them, and it reloads very fast. So... You'll have to uh, bear with me as I still try and learn this tank and try and figure out how to make it go and make it work. I know for a fact this thing cannot penetrate the Stink and Tiger 2 worth of crap. Oop, didn't mean to... Yeah, well, pardon my French. <laughs> this thing cannot penetrate KB or a uh, Tiger 2 at all. Anything else, though? Eh, tier 7 below, sure. But more than that, mm, it's, a, it's a trick shot. So, I mean, that's... It's kind of a uh, roll of the dice there. If you're on top like I am right here, and you got a whole bunch of 7s, 6s, and 5s, and 4s below you, eh, you're pretty good. Anything else, though, and you might be in a bit of trouble. So I'm actually going to attempt to kind of camp out this area. Ooh, a Lorraine. I see you. Yeah! I might actually stand a decent chance of taking a Lorraine on toe-to-toe, -to -toe because he actually has a 90 mil, I believe. So he's going to actually have to do some pretty hefty damage to me with a different gun to really be any effect, but we'll, we'll see. We it yeah! <laughs> okay, so maybe this thing can bully like a champ, but it's a tier 8, but only softy tier 8. With that KV-5, I'd have to actually place that shot really well and hit him in the uh, little R2-D2. And that's the thing about this tank, is I need to protect those two little things there. The rest of this thing actually has pretty decent armor. It's just the little R2-D2 is uh, pretty much a softy, and anything can penetrate it if it even sneezes at it. And I got that panther watching my flank, so I'm good to go. But, the interesting thing is, that kind of brings me to a uh, discussion I've been wanting to have for a while, is AP versus HE. As you can see here, I was choosing a nice soft target to hit with my H or my AP here, because I know I can go right through them. But hurt. in terms of like a Tiger 2 or something, where I'm not very certain I can do anything to it, you might want to switch to HE, especially at long ranges. Long ranges is kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, that's where I can use HE, because it can, in that point in time, actually. Uh, you cannot guarantee that your hit's gonna land where you want it to. So it becomes one of those little juggling things, and here's how I'm gonna break it down real quick. So, AP versus HE. AP is great, no matter what tank you're facing, if you know where to aim and are close enough so that your accuracy actually is going to be able to allow you to hit where you're aiming. Like that, I just kinda snapshotted at the uh, KV-5. I was aiming in the general area of where his little R2-D2 was, but it wasn't a guaranteed hit. Whereas now, I'm going to let it aim in, I'm actually going to place that shot, and there you go, went right through. But say he was at a longer distance, and my reticle is not that good, and I cannot guarantee that I'm going to actually hit his R2-D2. So what do I want to do? I'll probably want to switch to HE, and just kind of pelt him at a distance until he gets close enough, or until I close the gap, to where I can actually uh, verify I'm actually going to be able to do anything. Now, at a distance though, I can't verify that I'm actually going to hit anything soft, but for something like that, the 1S, where I know that the whole target is soft, I can go ahead and take a shot and just hope for the best. Now something like this uh, AC is going to cause me a little bit of heartache, because it's greatly sloped, so there's no guarantee even my HE will be able to do anything. But in terms of this KV-5, he's too close for me to really have to worry about the HE, so I'm always going to be using AP against him. Oh, nice shot, bro. So since we've kind of whittled down the majority of their forces, I'm now safe enough to pretty much go up on this cat point. This little PC-3 is not going to be of much effect, and this AC, yeah, well he is 
pretty powerful. He's at his side right now. So I'm gonna go through him every shot, cause again, he's at the side. He's gonna run right at the panther. Yeah, not the best of ideas. But if he were to come, or if he didn't destroy him, something that I'd do is actually uh, switch to HE at that time, so that, that way I could pelt him any which sort of way I want. So that's kind of the how to and why I use HE. Of course, as you can see here, I usually do about five to ten HE rounds per tank. If even that much, I generally prefer to use five, just in case of an emergency. Most tanks tier eight and above, I would never carry more HE than that because there's just no need, and it really won't benefit me too too much. But there are exceptions to that, and I'll get into it in the next video here. Not video, part to the video. Time to roll out. So here's an example of when you'll always want to load HE, and that is any tank like the SU-152 that has what is affectionately known as a derp cannon. So pretty much anything with a stubby nose or anything where the penetration and damage of your AP round is not that much. And the difference is actually a lot, is not gonna be that big, especially in the type of matchmaking this thing gets. So I'm using HE here because I know that this thing's gonna have a much higher damage output because I'm simply not gonna be able to penetrate too much with this tank, with the cannon. And also, what comes into play is the nice little, um, uh, how do you want to put it, the accuracy of this gun. I know that the I'm not going to hit anywhere near where I'm aiming with this thing. So I'm almost better off just placing the shot near them, just in their general vicinity, and trying to clip the tank anywhere I can. So that way I'm either going to do damage to any sort of a body. Hold on. I'll do damage to whatever modules are around it. Or, of course, I will end up tracking, letting other people be able to get more shots in. Any sort of way like that. Now, the beauty with HE is I've described this in different videos, but how it generally works is you kind of just target where you think a soft area is going to be in a large bubble. Because when the HE hits, a bunch of uh, little damage points come out in a huge uh, bubble around the impact area. And whatever point hits the softest armor is where the damage is going to be applied. So say that you were to hit my tank right about there on those two little hatches right here. Now the softest armor is probably right about here right next to this plating. So it would actually bubble out and it would detect those soft pieces of armor right in here. And so it would actually apply the damage right to that area as opposed to something like the harder parts which are right about here, or here, or something like this side or areas over here. So as long as it's in line of sight of that bubble, that's where the damage will be applied. And so, like I said, it'll always detect the weakest area and apply as much damage as possible, minus the um, mitigation of the armor. So, of course, there's some math involved as to how much damage it mitigates, but overall, basically, you want to aim for, like, turrets to break the gun, and also the damage will then shift down into the top of the tank or aiming at tracks or anything like that so that, that way you're doing uh, some stoppage so that, that way they cannot move now I'm getting hit here and I need to back up but get some nice juicy targets real quick and we'll just pop a shot now I actually hit him after the fact but as you can see there I hit him didn't really have to aim too carefully and like this tiger too you see that my uh, aim point is red so I'm not really gonna penetrate but I'm still gonna do that damage to him I gotta wait for the reload because it is a nice long reload alright so right there I did some pretty hefty damage it's about on par with everyone else with their actual penetrating shots but I don't have to really pay too much attention to my aiming point I can just point and click and fire and again that does apply to all HE but really you only want to use it when it is your uh, affectionately called derp cannons because otherwise you're gonna be hitting things that really aren't going to make too much of a difference come on turn baby oh not smart that's gonna yep that's gonna cost me yeah so I kinda wasn't paying attention to that one kinda just tried to sneak that shot in there but as you can see what I was trying to do is track him out there in the open I should have kinda waited but 
Oh well. So let's move on and do uh, another tank here to make up for this little death. Let's get this show on the road. So my first game with the Lorraine here, and I mean I just literally just picked it up because it was on sale. So I figured I would uh, grab it before they end up changing it up to the next tier up, and I would have a tougher time playing with or uh, having to afford it. So the fact that it was 50% off kind of made me grind cash like no one's business. Now it's uh, a little bit choppy actually, but I can't help that. So this thing is like a 40 second reload, and it's basically a larger version of the AMX 1390. It's not too, too rough. I mean, I knew from experience going against it that it basically is a gigantic softy and it can't really take much in the way of hits. And so I need to really be careful with it and kind of play it almost as a sniper, I'd say. Even with the bigger gun, I'll have to end up playing it as a sniper. But we'll, uh, we'll see what I end up doing with it. So, in terms of actually discussing its penetration and everything else, uh, the HE on the French should never be used. There actually is no point to it. I loaded six in case of a vast emergency, in which case I go up against like a mouse or E100 where I cannot pin it, and I need to do like two points of damage to kill it, maybe I'll get lucky sort of thing. But in terms of any sort of a uh, using as a standard thing here, definitely not. Do not recommend it at all. Now, this tank definitely cannot take a hit, and so I need to back it up, because it's going to get shot up. But yeah, so, HE, things like the French tanks, you can actually do some pretty extensive damage with just HE, because they will actually penetrate really effectively, depending on the range you're at and the type of gun, like the SU-100 HE, that'll, or SU-152 rather, That'll probably go right through the side of a French tank, no problem, and probably end up one-shotting it. I know a lot of artillery rounds will go right through the top, no problem whatsoever. And I love how that shot just curved low. And that one bounces. So, anyway, HE coming from a... Oh, uh, man, what are they called? SPG. There we go. If you were to use HE from an SPG versus a penetration gold round, you're talking a little bit of difference in terms of your effect. The gold round will actually go right through, well, let me put it to you this way. Rounds do not just drop straight down on top of targets. They come in at an angle. Now, sometimes that angle actually does hit the front of the armor and can bounce off. Could hit near it. Could do, should, could actually come down at an angle and go right through the top. So... A gold round actually makes it have a much higher penetration rate, so when it does come at that angle where it might hit the front of a tank, it doesn't uh, just deflect off or do a minimal amount of damage. Instead, it'll go right through and do its full damage. So it gives you actually a better chance of going through your target if it comes at a bad angle, thus upping your chances of actually doing something. Whereas the HE actually comes down, and you need to basically come down and either come through the top of it, go through the side of it, or land in any portion where it's going to be weak or a fragile part of the tank, and like typical HE. But the beauty of it is the fact that the the SPG round actually does have a much higher arc, so it does have a pretty good chance of coming down on top of the target, or at least onto a softer spot up on the top, where it'll actually go right through and do the full amount of damage, and won't suffer that armor mitigation that you see if you direct fire HE at somebody like I did in that SU-152 video. So, HE should be used in terms of a long-range sort of firefight where you cannot guarantee that you're going to be able to penetrate at all because you're not sure if you can hit those soft spots and your gun does not have the high enough pin to go through randomly. It should also be used in terms of an emergency in case of anyone capping a base and you need to just stop people dead in the tracks and you cannot risk not doing damage and so loading HE and then just spamming it into the crowd is a great thing you may hit two people you may hit one but you can definitely guarantee you're gonna get a little bit of damage just enough to reset their portion of the cap then you can adjust and target another person and do the same thing you might not damage them and kill them but you can reset it long enough to allow your teammates to catch up and be able to do what they need to do to clear the cap and win the game so any other HE use Reserve it for derp cannons. 
stick to your AP as much as you can. I see a lot of KV-5s using HE, and it doesn't really make too much sense. I'm sure that it has their purposes, but stick to your AP. Aim for the weak spots of tanks, which is usually your lower glacius, sides of turrets, sides of the hull, and of course if you're using an SPG, you want to kind of just lead your shot just enough so that it's actually going to cruise right onto the top as opposed to hitting the side or the front. So I'm going to leave it with that because that's about 15 some odd minutes. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. I hope you enjoyed the little rain, Lorraine here that I got. I also picked up the Patton. So there's my first tier 9. Not the first tier 9 I wanted. I wanted the T-54, but I'm not going to argue with the Patton. So I'm going to work on that one. I'll bring that to you next time. So until then, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. And thanks for tuning in, guys. Catch you guys in the next episode.